I want to create a space that allows me to express who I am fully and explore what that means and have a sense of adventure. So I have uh, my regular home and I've got the beach house just where I'm now. And in both those places, they really reflect my journey and where I'm heading and what I love experiencing. So there's books everywhere. So there's a continuous flow of knowledge and opportunities to dive into what I love. It's just how I've operated now for 17 years. So I know some people will go to a different place and they take nothing with them. If I go on holiday, I'm taking uh, my iPad filled with the books that I'm learning about. And for someone to say now they're at home and they're bored, and I know a lot of people aren't. They're, I'm not speaking of everybody's experiences. I know some people are flat out, some people don't get to be home, some people are at home with all their kids. But there are some people saying, I'm bored and I simply, have no understanding of that because there is so many beautiful, wonderful things to do in a day. And I'm self-isolating right now on my own. So Paul, our videographer and editor and producer and however many, many other titles you have, has visited for the day. But other than that, I'm completely alone 24 seven for weeks. I need to create a space that is conducive to my learning and to my growth and my contribution. I need to make sure the space represents where I'm heading and not just this moment of uncertainty in the world. So given all of that, what do I need to do? And I just go about constantly over years, it's not I just suddenly got organized because I got sent home because of a virus, creating those spaces. So that'd be my first tip. Think of your living spaces in terms of what you're living and learning, not just what gets you through the day. And if that means having an iPad full of books, or it means having people lend you books because you don't want to spend them, you, you can't or you don't want to spend the money on buying them, it doesn't matter. Just have this sense of educational purpose flowing through your life everywhere you go. And if you do that, as I have for 17 years, the 17 years is going to pass anyway. But what we learn along the way could be so enriching for our lives and for our relationships and for how we serve the world, whatever our chosen career is to fulfill our purpose of making a difference and adding value to humanity. So that's going on. That's the first thing, this deep sense of this is a learning space. And that's all I'm looking at piles of books there and piles of books behind me and piles of books upstairs that and at my office where I don't ever go anymore, the official TCI campus, it's my old office, which has been converted into a boardroom is filled with books because to learn is to nurture who I'm becoming. For whatever reason, I've let some of the edges slide a little bit, but every single day we'll have education. Every single day we'll have exercise and being healthy. Every single day we'll have planned healthy meals. It's never what's in the fridges or anything left to eat. It's always a sense of purpose around eating healthy. A lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit, lots of raw nuts. So what it is and how I'm contributing to the world beyond myself. And for you, it might be different. However, that wants to, and then I have time every day to speak to my mum every day for my friends, just finding ways throughout the day. And it could be more or less of each thing as the day unfolds. One day might be a lot more exercise. So some days I'll exercise for two to three hours. Other days it'll be all related to adding value to the world, my career. Other days it'll be a lot more friends and family time, especially when this virus first hit, there was a lot more speaking with people and reassuring ourselves and connecting with ourselves to make sure that, that we had that deep intimate flow of energy and feelings happening and we felt safe to be able to do that. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way. And I imagine with kids in the home, it's not gonna happen the way we structured and planned and anticipated and would prefer. And basically they're gonna blow it up. And so it's about being really adaptable and appreciating that there are all these competing interests and competing desires and preferences and needs going on in one household all the time. So maybe it's about us carving out time, different times to when the full on demands are. Maybe it's an earlier start. I know for a while there I was starting at 4 a.m. because I had a regular day of work I needed to do, but I also had to build a large project. It was a program I was building, a coaching program. I would start at 4, 4.30 a.m day after day after day because that was the quietest time and the time when I had the least interruptions when I could get the most done and I'd have three hours done by 7 seven thirty, and then the day would begin and the exercise would begin or whatever else was going to go so being adaptable about this and realizing the whole thing could get blown up in a moment's notice because of demands that's part of the job as well 
and the other part is staying really connected to people and I'm just monitoring that and making sure it's part of the flow of each day. So there's a real concrete connection to the proactivity I'm bringing. The key to all of this is to be proactive about structure. There are too many of us who have not learnt this muscle to be able to work from home and be effective, productive and contribute. And to master this is to really be masterful of our minds, I think, because it's asking of us to self-monitor, to, self, to be self-accountable, to self-manage, to self-regulate, all that great stuff that gives us an opportunity to move closer to our awareness of ourselves. So to me, this is about discovering ways I can experience fully my life in a very different way, because I know most of us are being pushed to home. And I do get some of us aren't, but for those of you who are, that's how I would go about this and I hope it's helped.